comprehensive gear upgrading guide. So, you've run Hunt a thousand times and have a bunch of items but don't know what to upgrade, what's trash, and why. I intend to go over everything possible here, and here's a few timestamps you can skip to based on what info you're missing. Character Archetypes First, let's talk about the main archetypes of characters. I'll break them down into four main categories. There's DPS, Bruisers, Tanks slash Healers, and Debuffers. DPS are generally full damage, no bulk damage dealers that want to hit really, really hard. Bruisers are bulky damage dealers that need tank stats while also balancing their damage. Tank slash healers are focused on full, bulky, tanky stats and resistance to debuffs or cleanse and usually scale off HP. Debuffers are about disrupting the opponent and mainly want speed and effectiveness and some bulky stats. But keep in mind there are exceptions to these four archetypes but I'll also try to tell you what main stats to look out for. Most DPS generally want attack, speed, crit chance, and crit damage on their gear, normally a crit damage or crit chance neck, attack percent ring, and speed boots. Bruisers usually want attack, health, defense, speed, crit chance, and crit damage because they're pretty greedy. They also can use a crit chance, crit damage, HP percent, or defense percent neck, an attack percent, health percent, or defense percent ring, and speed, attack percent, health percent, or defense percent boots. That's a mouthful. They want almost everything except for effectiveness and usually don't want resistance except for a few characters. Tank slash healers want HP, defense, speed, effect resistance, and sometimes effectiveness. They usually use HP percent or defense percent necks and rings. But as for boots, they use speed, HP percent, or defense percent. Debuffers want HP, defense, speed, and effectiveness, and sometimes effect resistance. The main difference here is that while tanks slash healers want to be bulky, debuffers emphasize the speed and effectiveness normally as their focus, but would also like to get some tanky stats as well. Item Sets Let's quickly talk about item set. Most sets are used in the game, but the ones generally considered the weakest would be the Revenge and Unity set. Rage set is also more exclusively used in PvE and not PvP, but almost every other set is used in most content. However, it can be important to understand that the set impacts how useful the main stat and substats can be. An item with amazing stats can be marred by the set. An example could be getting stats such as HP, Defense, Efres, and Effectiveness on a crit chance set piece, as only DPS really want that set, but only more tanky characters want that exact lineup of stats. That said, if it has the potential to be a good item, it can still be worth rolling even on an awkward set as long as it rolls well. Who knows when you may use it in the future. One thing to note when crafting is you should prioritize crafting weapons, helms, and chest pieces which are known as left side pieces because they always have the same main stat and use conversion gems for the necks, rings, and boots which are known as right side pieces. It can be okay to craft some right side pieces on occasion to extract them for cores, but it's unlikely you'll get great gear from crafting them. Using this method, you will get very strong left side pieces which will allow your right side ones to be weaker overall. Stat Combinations What combinations of stats are good or bad? Something important is that most combinations of stats are fairly good. The stats considered weaker most of the time are normally flat attack, flat health, and flat defense. Flat stats other than speed normally give much less stats than that of their percent counterparts, although flat defense is far better than flat health or attack in this regard, and some characters actually prefer it. While these stats can be good, they are normally what can ruin an item as well. One rarely will want flat HP on anyone but a pure tank, and even then, rolling into it can possibly ruin an item. Flat attack is similarly only normally good on DPS, and even then is much less value than attack percent. This is not an ironclad rule, but generally items with two non-speed flat stats are not very good unless the other two stats are good with one of the flat stats and fit one of the archetypes. Also, purple items you want all three stats to be usable on a character while red pieces should have three of the four stats be usable together. 
You can roll items with only two good stats if it's on a neck, ring, or boots, as they're harder to come by, but be warned the item has a high chance of failure unless it hits the stats you really want. When it comes to stat combinations, normally effectiveness and effect resistance are not very good on DPS or bruisers. An example is crit chance, crit damage, flat attack, and flat HP could still have some potential assuming it misses the flat HP or too many rolls into flat attack, but an item with crit chance, flat HP, flat defense, and effectiveness would be immediately useless on almost every character. Generally, DPS and bruiser stats don't mix well with effectiveness and effect resistance. One final important thing to keep in mind is that for some items, all that matters is their overall equipment score. Even if the stats aren't amazing together for most characters, there are units with strange builds, for example Senya, that could use an item with attack percent, HP percent, effect resistance, and flat HP, which you might not be interested in rolling, but if it misses the flat HP on its rolls, it could be actually useful for someone like her. Gear Rarities and Speed Checking Let's talk about the gear you'll be rolling and how to approach it. What is the potential of blue, purple, and red gear, and what is speed checking? Let's start with blue gear. This is all trash, destroy it. No one will ever use blue gear unless beyond desperate or you're a day one player. Now let's move on to the purples. When early in Epic 7, even to late game, purple pieces of gear will be your main basis of gearing and you'll be using a lot of these pieces. You normally want a purple piece of gear to have every substat be one a character archetype would actually want altogether. That way, rolling it to any stat will be beneficial, and you just have to hope for decent rolls. If the fourth stat added is weak, as long as the other rolls go well, the piece can still be useful and even be mod gemmed at the end to remove the final roll. I still use some purple gear on characters to this day, so don't rush past them until very late game. When very, very late game, red piece will be what you mostly roll, and you roll very few purple pieces and less perfect starting stats. A red piece is okay if it has one stat that isn't great, because as long as you don't roll into it more than once, you could always change it later and use a mod gem. Something to keep in mind with mod gems is they have diminishing returns based on rolls. The more an item has rolled into a stat, the less value the mod gem will give when changed, so it's recommended not to mod gem something unless it has one or zero rolls into it. One large exception exists when rolling gear, and that's if it has a speed roll on it. High speed rolls trump all other substats, and an item can have all trash stats except for a high speed roll and be considered strong. I will now explain speed checking. If an item has 3 to 4 speed, or 2 to 4 speed on speed sets specifically, it can be worthwhile rolling even if all of the other stats suck. If it rolls speed multiple times in a row from the start, it should be maxed to see if it can hit the final roll as well at plus 15. When rolling speed, if it misses it on the first roll, it can still be salvaged on the second upgrade, however two misses generally kills the speed check. Rolling gear with equipment score. Alright, perfect. So you understand everything and you're ready to actually start upgrading your items. In this section, I'll cover understanding equipment score and using it to roll your gear. First, let's talk about equipment score. This number is easily one of the most important factors for understanding how well your gear is rolling overall. You can actually sort your gear by equipment score and have it all show. If you scroll down a bit, it can give you an idea of what your average level of gear score is for your account. Keep in mind you should always be less picky with necks, rings, and boots as they're much harder to get. Every time a piece of gear levels, its score goes up with the main stat, and every three also the substat increases the equipment score. At plus zero, the main stat equals five equipment score. At plus three, its total is eight. At plus six, its total is 11. At plus nine, its total is 14. At plus 12, its total is 18. At plus 15, its total is 25. And when reforged, its total becomes 26 equipment score added on. Reforging also increases the substats, which adds 11 to 12 score at the end. Why does this matter? Because when using the equipment score number, you need to understand how much the substats are giving you compared to the main stat to accurately determine if your gear has rolled well. All the numbers I'm about to say are for level 85 gear. 88 gear is akin to already reforged pieces and has higher stat rolls to compensate. Most substats such as attack percent, health percent, 
defense percent, effectiveness, and effect resistance go from 4 to 8% per roll. Crit damage goes from 4 to 7%, crit chance from 3 to 5%, and speed from 1 to 4, and possibly 5 in some rare cases. These stats will always have a min to max roll of 4 to 8 equipment score. Speed, crit chance, and crit damage are worth more per point than the other stats, and it's reflected in that same equipment score. Flat stats such as attack, health, and defense are valued lower and are generally somewhere around 3 to 5 equipment score per roll. The highest starting equipment score possible for purple gear is around 28 to 29. Now, red gear is able to start with up to 37 equipment score, which is extremely high. Keep in mind that a badly rolled red piece can be beaten by a well-rolled purple piece despite starting with essentially one extra roll. Now, these are a lot of numbers, and hopefully it isn't making your head spin, but what does this all mean? Well, when you're looking at an item, as you understand the system more, you'll be able to glance to see if the item is good or bad much easier even if you don't know who wants the substats. It is not the end-all be-all, however. I have items with insanely high equipment scores that have a useless stat, making it worth much less than it's advertised, but it's possible a future character could want it. Generally, if an item can roll a high score, it can be worthwhile to roll unless the stats are very bad together. When looking at equipment score, consider the value of it depending on future rolls. If the item starts with a terrible gear score and has a bad combination of stats, it doesn't have much potential unless it perfectly rolls. An item with a high starting equipment score value can get a bad roll or two and still remain good. Compare the potential of the item with what your higher scores are on your account to better understand how lenient you can be with your items. At the end game, people would normally say that the final reforged score of 96 is very good for weapon, helm, and armor, while closer to 90 or slightly below is good enough for a neck, ring, or boots. Keep in mind, when newer, you'll have to lower your expectations or you'll have no gear to work with. You won't have any gear if you don't upgrade, so you can probably knock off at least 10 equipment score from both when you're more towards the mid game for a lot of your gear, and especially even more when you're newer. Using this, you could have an item at plus 3 with 34 equipment score, and the item could possibly hit 96 score if it quad high rolls. At plus 6 with 45 equipment score, the item could hit 96 score if it triple high rolls. At plus 9 with 56 equipment score, the item can still hit 96 score if it double high rolls. Finally, at plus 12 with a score of 68 and with a top roll, it could still hit 96 after reforge. This is an example you could use when upgrading gear to give a sense of understanding of whether to keep upgrading the item or not, but make sure you understand that the more you need certain pieces of gear such as a full DPS helm, the more lenient you might need to be with its equipment score. You won't have any gear of certain types if you just trash it for not having a score that you find high enough. Keep in mind, this score is not the end-all be-all, but simply a tool to visually understand how well the item has rolled. Even if it gets a bad roll, it can still be salvaged or vice versa. An item with amazing starting stats could become garbage with a couple of bad rolls. Also consider the odds. If an item starts with bad rolls and the odds of only hitting high rolls until the end is low, then maybe it's a waste of resources to continue upgrading it. I hope that this guide has helped you in some way. I tried to cover as much as I possibly could. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like or subscribe to the channel, and I hope to see you next time.